This is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief, Sierra 117, and you're listening to Podcast Unlocked, the world's number one Xbox podcast. Now, finish this fight. Master Chief, out. This episode of Unlocked is presented by Destiny 2 Beyond Light. What's happening, friends? This is it, the big one, Podcast Unlocked, episode 469. It is November 10th, 2020, the day you've had circled on your calendar since whenever they finally confirmed the date. But here we are, and, and the date that you've just been waiting for, the Xbox Series X and the Series S are out. It's The next generation has arrived. We've waited seven years between generations here. I'm Ryan McCaffrey, and I'm joined, as always, by Destin Legary. Give a it to launch, me, Destin. A launch day bam to oh, everybody. 1110. <laughs> Perfect episode title for this episode. I am so happy that everybody is getting their next gen consoles today. I can't wait to hear about your experiences and, and your first impressions of getting it. Uh I, I I was super stoked when I got to play with Series X, and I'm just excited for everybody. Well, good, we're gonna talk a, a lot day. more. Yes, we're gonna talk a lot more about that. Brendan Tyrell, good to see you, my friend. Good morning. Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, and Miranda Sanchez. Hi. Hey, everybody. I hope that you all are fun unboxing your boxes if you got one. And if you didn't, I hope you get, you're able to get one soon if you want one. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I keep like patting my Series X. Like I just, I pat the top. It's just very satisfying to touch the top of it. It's just like, good, good, good console. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. <laughs> well, it's, it's already been... Uh, quite a ride for a lot of people because i saw i'll tell you i saw i've seen a lot of tweets of people who actually got there shipped early to them and they received it early which i can't remember that ever happening with a with a major console launch uh like that would that would be the that would like blow my mind if i were if i had just pre-ordered and were expecting it on launch day and actually it showed up earlier so Happy for those folks. Unfortunately, the, I've uh, cer certainly seen plenty of people in my feed, and I'm sure you guys have seen it too. It's still uh, it's tough going out there trying to get oh. a Series X. Uh, I, Destin, I know you were, you were saying uh, eBay is is a war zone, and, oh, and the... <laughs> yeah, if you want to pay double markup, I mean, yeah, you could go to eBay. I don't recommend that. Uh, people have probably been camping out for any of the retailers that were allowing pickup. You know, a lot yeah. of people are saying, I think I know Sony said you can't go in stores and get it. So they're offering pickup. I think Xbox is doing the same thing. Yeah. But it is not easy to get a console right now. If you miss the pre-order window, uh, Godspeed. That's all I'll say. I suppose. Well, yeah, hopefully stock is going to keep coming. We just that's the problem. We don't know. We don't know. I yeah. mean, Phil Spencer tweeting out a picture yesterday of of an Ark of the Covenant looking warehouse. Oh, yeah, really you remember you asked him, Ryan, are we going to have inventory shortages? And he said no. So I wouldn't be surprised if he holds to that and we have another uh, inventory push later, like a little yeah, later in November. So. I, I hope that's the case. I want people to play so. their consoles. Now, Brendan Tyrell, hey, arguably hi. the biggest game uh, for the Series X this week. Series X optimized, really a big new title, showing off the new system. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is probably mm -hmm. that game. Uh, weird and, how that shook out, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's you reviewed it, uh, and yeah. boy, you know, yes, we are very grateful to have our jobs, and we are lucky to get to do what we do. But you you put in sixty hours in a week just yeah. on the game uh, to get it turned around from the time you got the series, you know, the, the the Xbox version of the game, started reviewing it, and and then actually doing the review after the sixty hours, which is which That's is no the hard part. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, I want to hear from you, and I know our audience does. You know, if is this the game to pick up this week? If you're picking up a Series X, how is Assassin's Creed Valhalla? The floor is yours, my friend. Yeah, I think I think so. First of all, I apologize for being brain dead, still catching up on sleep. Um, but <clears throat> as far as like you know that first launch of games go, I think Siri, uh, I think Valhalla really does make a good argument for. You know, that third party game that you pick up to play to kick the tires on your Series X or S. Um, you know, I, I know it's an Assassin's Creed game. Like, it doesn't play all that differently from Odyssey or Origins, right? Like, anytime you get a new game, you really want 
to see something that makes use of the next gen stuff and you know this game has been in development for a long time but like it's it's it go watch the video review at ign if you haven't seen it yet um that capture doesn't do it justice, but it does show off one of the things that is just fantastic, which is the world that they've created in Valhalla is so friggin' beautiful, especially at 4K. Unfortunately, you know, I played in 4K. We captured at 1080 just for logistical purposes this time. Um, but when you're like hanging out on a hill, right, or one of the synchronization points on top of a tower somewhere, and it's in 4K and it's in 60, and you're looking out over the fields and the clouds are like rolling overhead and the shadows are slowly crawling across the landscape and everything is smooth, everything is super crisp, draw distances for miles. Like it had that cool moment that reminded me of like Breath of the Wild, where it's like you, see, or Skyrim, right, where you see that place off in the distance, you can go there. And I had that that sort of twinge again when I would see things off in the distance and then ride there and then interact with yeah. it. And, um, it. It is a really, really, really beautiful game. Um, and running, you know, 4K 60, like the, the 60 frames per second totally makes the experience for me because it is so smooth and it is just sort of seamless as you're running around. And um, I mean, it's a, it's, it's, an, it's a Ubisoft open world game, so it's got bugs, right? Um, lots of bugs actually, and weird hitches and glitches that, you know, take you out of it, but not that we should forgive that. No, not at all. But I mean, they pale in the, in this, what I said in my review as well, they pale in comparison to the overall experience where yeah. some of them are bad. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. I, the thing hard crashed on me several times, <laughs> but you know, as it happened and maybe it's the power of the Xbox, I was back in the game in like two minutes. It, it wasn't that big of a deal to me, less than that really. Um, it wasn't that big of a deal to me in the the scope of the entire experience, right? right. They're bad when they happen, but overall, sixty like hours. Like Bethesda games, where you know there are yeah. bugs, but you're just you have such a great time that it yeah, and kind of not. kind of like Bethesda games, some of them were like kind of endearing, you know, where it's like everyone remembers Skyrim when the giant hits the the um, the mammoth and it goes flying into the air, like that was <laughs> that was a bug. It was bad, but it was funny, you know. And there are some of those in Assassin's Creed as well. There are some very annoying ones where, you know, you get stuck on stairs. You can't break stuff that you're supposed to be able to break, um, uh, you know, quests that stop. And, and it's frustrating. But overall, like the scope of the game, playing in 60 frames, running around, just riding through the wilderness. Uh, it, it It's a really cool sort of next step up to fidelity that i think a lot of people who are just playing on a regular Xbox One will have probably never experienced. Um, so, so it's a, it's, it's a really good showcase of like what to expect from next generation. Like, yes, it doesn't put the thing to its paces. It doesn't do, you know, everything that we expect from next gen, as far as where we're going to be in three or four years. But this is sort of like what I consider the baseline for experience moving forward is 4k 60. And when it works really well and it's fluid and it's crisp, like Valhalla is, um, it's really something special. It's awesome. And you gave it an eight. You I called it, it great. A great out of 10, says IGN.com's Brandon it, Tyrell. It was great out of 10. Like I said, you know, I think it's it's pretty easy to uh, focus on the trees at the risk of, you know, missing out on the forest, right? So taking everything into account, it's still a great game. It's got its problems, but I had a lot of fun with it. I wish I didn't have to play it in a week. Uh, I would have loved <laughs> to, I would have loved to spend a little more time and do, you know, things a little bit more of my style, which is exploration based. And then when I get bored or something, I want to go back and pick up the main story. But um, yeah, it's, it's a good game. It's a fun game. It's a Excellent. great well, game. Well, you're, yeah. Read your review on IGN.com also, or you can find on, on YouTube, the video version, nine minute video review, which is, which is an epic. Like we, we don't usually long, go that right? long. Yeah. Yeah. Except for the, the, the biggest and, and the uh, most anticipated longer game, reviews. So. Yeah. hundred yes. percent. So Check I, out. I love, I'm sorry, Ryan, I don't mean to keep cutting you off. I love longer reviews. I I, oh, yeah. I, I think that structure <laughs> is fantastic. Like some of our previews even touch 10 minutes, which is again, crazy on the long side, right? The problem is logistics is, is, is <laughs> you know, we usually have a word count that we hit for review scripts and that brings you in around five, six minutes. Yeah. Um, but some games you just, you got to talk, you got to talk at length in order to touch on everything. So while I do love reviews, um, you know, it's hard. It's a harder turnaround, especially for the team. Like we were, we were. I was writing and cutting this this uh, video review with uh, Pat Coughlin, who's who's on our video side. 
Uh, we were doing that on like Sunday afternoon. And I think we wrapped everything up at like midnight or 1230, like a few hours before the 3 a.m. embargo. So longer reviews are great. I'm glad it turned out this time. But, um, you know, it's not something that's feasible every time. Yeah, that's well, all your game. That's all your gameplay too, which is awesome. Oh, just in ruining oh the show goodness. with a with a ringing cell is that, phone. But. Is it your? Did you get <laughs> is it your shipment? I'm, about to say. Um, I'm actually have anyway, mine on. It's so it's FedEx telling, it. telling me my Xbox is here, Mr. Xbox. Really? Is it really? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> yeah, I have, you're I'm excused. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. So if you guys hear phones going off, it's probably that, which is also what I'm waiting for because I have another Xbox coming in for one of our coworkers. So. Well, in any case, uh, yeah, so glad to hear that Assassin's Creed Valhalla is great, and it's it's a worthy showcase for the Series X here on launch day. There's a lot more, though. I mean, you know, I've got NBA 2K21, the next-gen version, running behind me, and it is a separate next-gen version. That's uh, cool. And you can see, like, you know, I know you can't tell from ca a camera within a camera, a screen within a screen, but, man, it looks good, so... You know, there's some there's some good variety of stuff out there, even if we're lacking in those big first party killer exclusives for now. But uh, happy Xbox Series launch day and launch week, everybody. And with that, let's get to some news. The big story, uh, Destin, I, I have to go to you here. The, the man who has played more Mass Effect than anyone I know, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, finally confirmed as a real thing after many leaks rumors reports it will it was announced on 117 of course and here it is it's it's coming out in spring of 2021 it will include the single player base content of course and all the DLC from Mass Effect 1 2 and 3 and including all of the uh, promo weapons armors packs all the content basically coming back Optimi remastered and optimized for 4K Ultra HD. Casey Hudson, who of course runs Bioware now and was the project lead on Mass Effect originally, uh, said that the team at Bioware's goal, quote, was not to remake or reimagine the original games, but to modernize the experience so that fans and new players can experience the original work in its best possible form. And Destin, what I do does go that to your... mean? That's, yeah. that's really <laughs> funny to me. I want to go. That's, this three. is what I want to hear from. You are the mass effect expert. Effect. Yeah. I want to know what you <laughs> Hold think on. We'll that. workshop this. There's something. I don't, I don't know if I fine. like that, but we'll go with it. Um, yeah. So I'm really, really stoked about this. I'm going to play through it again. The dream has always been for them to take a look back at at least Mass Effect 1 yes. and sort of modernize a lot of the systems, right? <laughs> because when they phrase it this way, the goal is not to remake or reimagine the original games, but to modernize the experience so that fans and new players can experience the original work in its best possible form. To me, that says they're not changing the core systems, which do need a little bit of work. We're probably going to get a uh, higher frame rate, higher fidelity, better so. lighting, you know, better textures. I think they're going to do that stuff. I would have loved it. Well, we don't know. Right. So I can't even speak definitively, but I do not think they're going to be touching the core experience. And that's what I really would have loved to see them do. And uh, I hope I'm eating crow and they actually did that. I can't wait to see what they've done here. I'm tremendously excited. I, Miranda, you got to be excited, too. Yes, I've been like dancing over here. But N7 Day is always a really exciting time. And having this announced on N7 Day is always super exciting. Uh, but to kind of your, echo your points, Dustin, I think if you guys haven't ever played Mass Effect, going back to the original game is kind of a pain. Uh, the way the game controls between Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 is rather different in the way it, it kind of formats its combat experience. Yeah. But the first one really feels old. Like, it's it's a little clunky. It's not the most fun to play. You can absolutely oh, still you? go back and play it, but... I mean, you can still play it, but like, as you're saying, it needs to be modernized, right? Like it just doesn't handle correctly. Like it's a little, yeah. it's just clunky. It feels, the, it feels like you're carrying something that's like, like, you know, when you have a really heavy box and you're like, it's really hard to pick up. You can do it. You'll get, you're <laughs> going to get that, you know, that box of stairs. Just but like, Mass Effect, like a really heavy box. IG. Yeah. Look, looking back <laughs> with, with hit, sort of the hindsight of history, you can really see the, the, the sort of Mass Effect one was kind of the bridge between Knights of the Old Republic, which was Casey Hudson's project right before Mass Effect, to then Mass Effect 2 and 3. Like, KOTOR was a, uh, like, basically a turn-based, more or less a turn-based game, uh, mm. where you would queue up attacks uh, and what you wanted to do. And then Mass Effect 1 kind of made it more real-time, 
And then really two and three turned it into a third person shooter that had role playing elements. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how one is handled. Now, Destin, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't the PC, the original PC version of Mass Effect released not long after the original Xbox version in fall of 2007, the, the PC version did tweak the inventory system, didn't it? So to make it a little, the interface for that a little bit cleaner. Yeah, the, the interface was quite different on PC because it had to accommodate for a keyboard and mouse. So right. a lot of the puzzles involved moving your mouse through the like keyhole as opposed to doing it however you did it on Xbox. I can't even remember. So yeah, there were definitely changes on the PC version. And you know, uh, fans of the series for years have been adding improvements to the game, like Im improved lighting. And there's this huge texture pack you can download that the fans made that sort of enhanced the PC version of Mass Effect 1. Um, and, and they've done a phenomenal job. Yeah, so the concern for me is always like, please don't just do that, you know, yeah. because because that's been out in the community for for years. Um, I I really want to see what Bioware, this this renowned studio, can do with the game that they built, especially with Casey Hudson there. Like Casey Hudson drew concept art of of the Geth on a napkin, and that's that's what ended up becoming the Geth. I I admire like that period in Bioware's history is just so interesting to look back at and how they just they're in edmonton right and they were into like this this small studio well not small studio space but like an office space and they were coming together as a, a content team and just creating this amazing experience for us and like they were really in their heyday then i i hope uh we get to revisit that and and see how they would modernize that now that a lot of the core team is there right Brandon, you got a comment yeah, I would say like one of the challenges too is like I don't want Mass Effect to lose its identity of how unique that gameplay is as a bridge between kind of almost pseudo turn based RPG with shooter. Like it really has that RPG, you know, element to it that is iconic to Mass Effect 1. And I want that to be there just like cleaned up, you know, like I don't want it to feel like any other third person shooter. It needs to still feel like Mass Effect, just a little bit easier to handle. So uh, the remaster isn't for Series X. But it will have, quote, forward compatibility, okay, and targeted enhancements on Series X and PlayStation 5. What does that mean? Because <laughs> that that sounds like Series X optimizations, but not I, I don't understand. Wait, do they just mean Ryan, it'll can take you take advantage of the SSD? Can you clarify this quote? It says the remaster isn't for Series X but it will have forward compatibility enhancements for the Series X and PlayStation 5. Is there a typo? No, the, well, look where the quote is. So that, that's, this is clipped from the IGN story. So the quote part is forward <laughs> compatibility and targeted enhancements on okay. Series X. Like, uh, uh, are we just talking about upscaling or maybe like- Yeah, like I'm Ryan? just- weird. There's a weird line being drawn there and I'm just not sure where that line is. I, that's I why bet. I was like, is this a typo? Cause that's such a bizarre <laughs> yeah. statement I mean, to put out. So yeah. it wasn't yeah. designed specifically yeah. for next gen, but it works on next gen and yeah, will right. have enhancements, but it wasn't intended to necessarily be there, but it will be there. So <laughs> that, yeah. That's what it says to me is like, look, as you said at the top of the segment, Ryan, like this, this announcement has been the worst kept secret for a long time. Um, clearly this has been in development or they've been working on this for a while. It's probably targeted at current gen, but it will work on next gen. So I imagine that's probably where that line comes from. Like it is not intended to be a next gen remaster package. Um, it just, you know, has the good fortune of working. Uh, yeah, I guess the, the SSD will really cut down those elevator rides in Mass oh, Effect man. 1, right? <laughs> there goes my yeah. snack break. <laughs> <laughs> So there's more here. The feature. Um, yeah. There is more to this. Hudson, Casey Hudson also explained, or excuse me, also confirmed that, quote, a veteran team has been hard at work envisioning the next chapter of the Mass Effect universe, end quote. Bioware's only in the early stages of the project. Uh, they did share one sort of bit of concept art from that. Uh, Miranda, what, what do you make of, of uh, sort of the the future of Bioware here. And they, they're seemingly now, uh, I, I guess walking away from Anthem. Is that what this is? This is saying, I don't know. They're still kind of tweak. Like, I feel like they're still picking at Anthem. Like it, it exists and things happen with it. They give periodic updates, but it's very interesting to me to hear what they want to do going forward with mass effect. So how I interpreted this is that maybe 
they're thinking about developing a bigger Mass Effect, I could see them doing it after the next Dragon Age. Like, say they have that team, they push that out, and then they ship to that, and they still have a team on Anthem. Um, hmm. I could see that being the case, and they just kind of still try to make that work and not give up on it. Uh, I'm Joker. not too sure what they want to do with that, but I think given how much time that they have put to it, I would like to see them really go forward with Anthem and, and make it better. Um, yes, then I think uh, the 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 use of the word veteran team there was very deliberate, wasn't it? Oh, I mean, yeah, for sure. They're war. they're trying to sort of say, hey, we got the same gear. people on it that made like the beloved franchise. We're taking this seriously. Uh, we're working on it. Uh, they're trying to just say, I think they know Andromeda was not received positively. Miranda, do yeah. you still have the the same fondness for Andromeda looking back at it today? I did. I I always feel weird saying it because I did enjoy my time in Andromeda. Obviously, it's not the original trilogy. Acknowledge yeah. that. They never brought my Quarians over. I'm still mad <laughs> you know, that they got left in a book instead of full DLC. But um, I, I did enjoy my time with it. I can see like thoughts of what we loved about the original trilogy in Andromeda. It just didn't make it all the way through. And I think even playing that game and when we went and got to go preview it, uh, you could see where things shifted in development. Like that game became pretty different at a certain point. And you could see that. And you, you can see that that's a, that's a problem, right? With the development cycle. So I'm just hoping personally, like it's cool that you have a veteran team on this. But what I'm more concerned about is that you're giving the project time to have the quality that it needs to be, you know, made correctly. Um, and I think that's kind of maybe an issue that happened with Andromeda. And so I don't think you necessarily need to have like the same old crew on a game to make it good, right? Like, I think there's a lot of innovation that can be made with a new team. Look at but, them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, I think there's so many different things. Even at like Nintendo, they, they're pretty big on making sure that they're passing the torch and finding the right people to lead things. Uh, but it's really hard to find that and to make sure that you're, you're keeping those dreams alive in a very authentic way. Um, no so I, I just hope they give this the time it needs to be developed, I guess. Here's how I imagine this all unfolding. Casey Hudson, he's overworking on HoloLens. He sees Andromeda come out. He sees all the feedback. He hits this magic button on his wall. A suit of N7 armor opens up. He adorns it and he heads back to Edmonton. And he's like, no, let's do this right. <laughs> We're getting the team back together. And well, yeah. but so okay, he's pretty so sure that that'll work. That's Halo's the first dramatic. thing he did. <laughs> like, he was like, Yeah, Anthem, whatever, all this stuff is going to happen. Mass Effect, that's our focus for the next few years. I mean, yeah, it, it does mean, seem for Dragon like Age, right? the, I mean, Dragon Age, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so the, the Dragon Age team uh, has been hard at work for a long time, and they seemingly are still have quite a ways to go. We got teased at, at EA's. E3, and I'm using air quotes if you're listening on the podcast uh, <laughs> press conference. So they're still going along. And then, yeah, you've got the Anthem team. It This seems to me that, I mean, because they, you know, they, they did try, they tried to fix Anthem. And Destin, you would know better than I would, but it <laughs> seems like there has not been a response from the, like, it doesn't seem like that, that it's, that it's had a, you know, Final Fantasy 14 or No Man's Sky like rebirth. No, that, uh, that's in progress. They've in been, progress. Okay. Yeah, the anthem. The anthem team in Austin has been actually talking about it. They have a dedicated team to working on Anthem. Uh, I am not holding on to hope that Anthem is going to have this massive resurgence and suddenly be this amazing game. I don't think it has the core systems necessary to do that. I think what they do is they do the best they possibly can with Anthem, get it to a state where they're mostly happy with some of the systems, and then they do Anthem 2. They need to like just chalk Anthem 1 up to an experiment, redo it for Anthem 2 and do it properly, yeah. and launch it. The name so, just has too much negativity associated I, with I it. Tol I totally agree, but I, I, I don't think you're right about it doesn't. I think it does have the core systems. I think it has everything it yeah. needs. It's just it doesn't come together in a way that's fun. They make flying, two different games. Yeah. Yeah. Flying yeah. through the air is fun. But yeah. you could tell they tried to make Iron Man the game based on Destiny. And it just didn't work yeah. out, right? So Anthem V2, whatever that's going to be. And, and this process has been going on for a long time. Even like two, I want to say two years ago, we were like, hey, are we going to hear about what's new for Anthem? 
Um, and it just keeps getting delayed and delayed. So I, I have faith that they can turn it into something, but I also agree with you that I think it's too late, right? Maybe. If, that, if that is a service game, like that window's gone. Like people and, aren't, aren't really going to come back for that. And I agree with you on that point, especially. I think the games as service experiment has largely failed. We've seen Avengers lose a ton of money, or at least that's the rumor that's been going around. Anthem was a massive bomb. What if they redid Anthem and it's not a game as a service and they're able to focus on their storytelling, refine that story, tell a better story, give the player a better overall experience, and have subtle aspects of cooperative gameplay in the way that say borderlands three does it right it doesn't have not everything has to be games of service and i wonder when companies are going to start to say you know maybe the single player thing isn't such a bad idea after all you know destin you you actually answered a question in my head about when you said so it's it's bioware austin that's now running anthem yeah which means BioWare Edmonton, the the other team that that was the Anthem team, uh, you know, aside from the Dragon Age team, that's who's going to make Mass Effect. That's your veteran team, uh, while and is Austin that... takes over Anthem, because of course Austin has experience in live service games. They mm -hmm. did Star Wars: The Old Republic, so pretty good game. That, yeah, and what? So whether this was always the plan to sort of have uh, BioWare Edmonton hand off to at to Austin on this or whether this is a new plan this is the path forward for Mass Effect uh so i mean we're probably still four, i would guess 4 to 5 years away from yeah. from Mass Effect uh coming back properly but this remaster is cuz it is not a remake it is clearly a remaster for better and for worse it is the first step hopefully towards rehabilitating not just the franchise's image but BioWare's image overall and and saying that that same team that worked on Anthem is working on the new Mass Effect, does that inspire confidence in people or not in the general general no. core? That's game why community, that's think. why he yeah. said better. You know, the veteran team has come back together. It's not a hey, this is the same team that made the original Mass Effect. It's hey, we're still Bioware. We still have all the people here that know how to make mm -hmm. a great game. So don't worry about it. I know we've slipped I up recently, but don't worry about it. I, I like everybody at Bioware tremendously. I have a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of respect for the work that they've done. They really need a huge win. Yeah, they you do. know, like if this remaster is just a retexture, that's just another like negative in the community's eyes. They really need right. like like Dragon Age better be phenomenal. I if think it's it will another be. difficult <laughs> project, then yeah. Uh, I will also say the last Anthem update, just for anyone who's curious, was on October twenty eighth, twenty twenty. So. Not too long ago. Okay. Jeez. Yeah. And, and it looks totally different. They revamped yeah. like the inventory system and everything. They're doing a lot of work over there. They're not just not doing anything. So, right. Yeah. I think we could do a whole deep dive on like what went wrong with Anthem and how, despite what they're doing, I think, I think Dustin, what you're saying is pretty correct on maybe just relaunching or doing something new will be what that game needs, but who knows? Well, we've got so much to cover. Let's move on to the next story. Xbox is reportedly looking to purchase Japanese game development studios and has been in contact with both small and large game developers. According to a report from Bloomberg, quote, several Japan-based game developers of varying size have been approached by Microsoft to talk about acquiring their business. Developers <laughs> asked not... Sorry. Asked, well, hold on, hold your... <laughs> hold on, Destin. Uh, the developers asked not to be identified at this time due to the private nature of the talks. Well, Destin, you're uh, saying what's, I think, on everybody's mind. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, no, I just had something in my throat, Ryan. It, 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 <laughs> no, was it, Sega. A, was it a hedgehog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little uh, bristly. No, uh, the Sega rumor, it's going around not that long ago in, in your run of show notes here. And uh, yeah. honestly, that makes total sense for Xbox, right? Um I, I think that would be a good get for Microsoft. I don't really have a ton of commentary to add besides that that would be one. It would be, I don't know, who else would be on your mind as somebody who would be a good get for them? Well, like you're, you're... Any thoughts on on who you'd, you'd like to see Xbox target in Japan? I think Sega would be interesting with what they have as far as their properties. We talked about this a little bit before. Yeah. But I mean, Sega owns a lot of different smaller, or like they say, weird to say smaller studios, but a lot of studios under their umbrella too. So that yeah. would bring a ton of games into the Xbox yeah. ecosystem exclusively. So, <laughs> right, right off the top of my head, I wonder what sort of investment they're looking for, having just spent however million, I'm sorry, however billion with a B. Seven and a half. 
dollars on Bethesda. Um, that is a large chunk of change. So I don't know. I don't know what like what you know, Daddy Microsoft's bank account looks like right now as far as acquisitions for the future go. Um, it makes sense if you want to stay in a in a console. Uh, sort of business, you need to figure out ways to make footholds into markets and regions that you just are not cracking into right now. So this makes a lot of sense. How much do they want to invest in it, though, is the question. Well, um, yeah, the fact that they're saying bit large and small developers seems like they're yeah. open to any possible, you know, that their their pockets are not empty yet. There are still cash in those pockets. Yeah. So my dream, my dream uh, makeup of what Microsoft buys, uh, you know, or, or acquires out of Japan is uh, Kojima Productions. <laughs> I think that is a very interesting and potentially incredibly lucrative. Uh, <laughs> acquisition. Sony right own the would studio never or happen, did they just right? partner up? Acquisition for them. What's that? That would never <laughs> happen, right? No, Sony yeah. doesn't own them. Yeah, they're they second don't. party. Okay, yeah, it was just a partnership. They're yeah, just, they're, they're just publishing, right? That as would far, be wild. As far as I know, they're second party. But can you imagine Kojima officially joining uh, Microsoft? I don't think it'll ever happen because no, he's got a great relationship with Sony. By all got a great account. relationship with Sony. What happened with Konami? I honestly don't think he wants to work for a, a boss like you know. He has proven that he's got the name, and you know his team obviously has the talent to create stuff on their own. Why? Why would you need to be owned? So I don't think that'll happen. But can you imagine? Um, outside of that, I would love to see From Software on the yeah. on the docket Oof. for them. Another strange pickup because From Software originally was second party back in you know Demon Souls. They only made it for for Sony, but since then they've you know obviously Dark Souls has been on everything. Well, you're forgetting their Xbox history with uh, yeah with, with uh, yeah. So, well, I mean, a, they have a yeah. long history. It, at what point do you look at a studio and say it's the same studio as the past, right? Like there, right. there was a, a certain turning point with Dark Souls for them. Uh, and that sort of became their their sort of lucrative path forward. Um, but, you know, Bloodborne, you'd be insane to think there's not a sequel in the works, right? You know, I've been, I've been right. saying this for five years, four years. Um, so, again, that one's a little thin, but maybe... Uh, and then I pulled up a few other ones that I think are uh, are interesting. I think level five, which that's does, actually I was going to bring up. Yeah, I think level I think five, which is Nino Kuni, kind of fits right up there with Microsoft. They have a history of purchasing or, or working with Japanese developers to create JRPGs. Um, and Nino Kuni just sort of fits Microsoft's bill, right? Look at Ori and some of these other games. Sea of Thieves, very family so, friendly, and they were they were developing True Fantasy Live Online as an original Xbox exclusive. And it got they canceled. were that was canceled. <laughs> they did, it's, they, it's a make good twenty years later. So they also work on Yokai Watch, which I think mm -hmm. would be an interesting thing to have in the Xbox ecosystem because it's like a Pokemon game essentially, but just a, a different version with with Yokai. And um, I, I wonder if they would still work with like Nintendo on that though, because that's a very like Nintendo game, especially yeah. in Japan. I don't think it's as big here, but it's definitely something bigger in Japan. And I, th I thought about that exact same thing because it is a competitor of Pokemon, right? So yeah. not, not, not a competitor is probably a strong word, but um, at what point, like, do they retain the license? Are they still able to work on that license if they get acquired? I, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Um, the other one that I, I thought would be a good get for them is Arc System Works, who's got a, mm. a really phenomenal, phenomenal history of fighting games. Uh, they, you know, just recently did um, uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. They do the Guilty Gear stuff. They just they, if they haven't released Strive, no, it's coming out next year, I think. Um, they kill a kill game. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that, that's sort of their fighting game um, area covered for them and then the last one is kind of a weird one but grasshopper manufacturer i think would be an interesting oh. an interesting one you know sony's got Suda. their kojima xbox gets their suit of 51 right he makes very strange games very weird games um but they've always been niche they i i don't think any of them have really exploded uh unlike you know no more heroes has i, I think what i'm trying to say is i think that's probably their highest profile one um, but I could see him, you know, with a blank check from Microsoft, uh, their studio doing some really, really interesting things. And, you know, his games have been on the Xbox in the past. I don't know if you remember the, the bullet hell game, Cine Mora, um, oh, yeah. on, on Xbox Live Arcade. That came from Grasshopper Manufacturer. There was a game called Black Knight Sword that I think I actually reviewed five years ago or something like that. It was very interesting as well. Um, so, you know, I, th I think there could be something there. 
if Microsoft is very interested in, in picking up not just a studio, but a personality. So Miranda, I have this is going to ruffle some feathers and maybe stir up some bad feelings with some people. Platinum Games. I'm sorry. I was going to say that too. Go ahead. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I think that would just make a lot of sense. I think they make those sort of like action JRPGs just just a super. I keep saying super. A oh, wonderful wide variety of games that I think would fit really well in the Xbox ecosystem. Um, obviously, they have Bayonetta. They've done. They did Mel Gear. Rising Revengeance, Wonderful 101. Uh, I remember they did the Legend of Korra game. I actually covered that forever ago. Uh, obviously, Nier is huge, and I think that actually fits really well in the Xbox ecosystem. So I think uh, that Vanquish would be an interesting too. pickup. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Ryan. You've just got a cheerleader dance squad going on behind you right now. <laughs> oh, I see a coach in a plaid suit. I uh, it must be halftime. Yeah, be you over, just missed yeah. them. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, Miranda, I'm with you on uh, that. Was one of the one of the two? I, I wrote down a, a like a small developer and a big one. I'm with you on platinum because yeah, it's like yes, there was Scalebound. No, I don't think Scalebound would come back even if Microsoft bought them. But uh, but yeah, there is a history there. There is a partnership, and they make the thing. Uh, the thing about platinum is they make critically acclaimed games, just typically fantastic games that, with all due respect generally have not sold very well and they could they could be a great there could be a great mutual fit there of xbox saying hey you guys make great stuff we'd love to help you bring it to a bigger audience through game pass and and the first party family and platinum could say hey we'd love the we'd love to have our games be be put out to more people and to have the the power of the marketing arm of of first party and to have that financial security for the studio too so I agree that could be a big fit. And then just just to throw the pie in the sky one, if again, if if the rumor is big and small developers, Capcom. I yeah. mean, look at the treasure trove of, of yeah. IP that's really good that Capcom has. Resident Evil, Street Fighter, Monster Hunter, Devil May Cry, the currently dormant Mega Man, Dead Rising. The list goes on. I mean, that's that, that really, is, really, really good thought, Ryan. <laughs> there's, I don't know what the price would be. I don't know, if, but you know, if you're gonna, if you paid seven and a half billion for for Bethesda and you're still Five. shopping, yeah, Capcom, and you want to, you want something, you know, you want that uh, variety. Uh, you want the Japanese game development, boy. Capcom, you couldn't really. They might be the Bethesda of Japan as far as the the quality and quantity of their portfolio so i think that's know. really i think that's a really smart observation because if you're looking to buy into japan you're also looking to have crossover interest with your western markets right capcom Absolutely. definitely has that yeah. look what other publisher has so many game series that are popular on both sides of of the pacific you know uh resident evil is, is big in both monster hunters big in both um that's really smart man that's really really smart i like that a lot uh, I'm going to say five billion dollars. I mean, who knows? I don't know what it would actually take to uh, to get that, but you know, it's it's not out of the question. Um, hey, Ryan, uh, small thing. Can I just interject? It's just a super nerdy thing. Um, <laughs> Phil Spencer just confirmed that uh, Destiny Two multiplayer is going to run at 120 FPS. Woo! Nice. So <laughs> that's kind of insane for the Series X to to be sporting. Pretty that cool is, stuff. That is fantastic. <laughs> If you're just listening to the podcast uh, audio version of it, Destin has removed his shirt and is running circles in his living room. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the loot box. Colby is our unlocked listener who we are going to hear from via Yappa. By the way, just a quick before we play this, we want to hear from you and see you via Yappa. We have a video comment system on IGN now. The, the best way to do it to get your loot box question featured as a Yappa video comment on the show. Just Google, when you hear this and you got a cool question for the panel, just Google IGN Unlocked 469 to find this episode's show page. And then you'll just find the Yappa section right down near the bottom, right above the comments. And you don't have to make a Yappa account if you don't want to. You can sign in with Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Discuss. So just leave us an awesome video comment as Colby did. Go ahead, Colby. 
Hi, Ryan and the Unlock Crew. I'm sitting here today at work listening to, I guess, last week's podcast. Don't tell my boss. And <laughs> your conversation around cyberpunk brought up a question in my head. With originally the next gen version of cyberpunk releasing later, with the delay, what do you think the possibility is of both the next gen? version of cyberpunk and i guess what is still the current gen version of cyberpunk releasing side by side um or do you think the next gen version will be pushed back even further uh let me know your thoughts brandon you want to take this one give no. the bad news <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately i mean it's a fair question right yeah it is we've right. got and we've gotten this question a lot which is why i wanted to play it because colby is far from the only person who's been wondering this yeah, I, I mean, it's already been established the um, the next gen version isn't going to be out for a while. Uh, I mean, you're looking into, I'd say, a tail end of Q1 2021 is when you start looking for it, and we'll see what happens. Um, but realistically, it's not going to be until well into next year. Yeah, they they would have announced it. They would have said, "Hey, we're delaying the game, but." The next gen version is going to be there on day one. They would have yeah. absolutely let everybody know if that was going to be the case. So thank you, Colby. And again, if you've got a loot box question for us, hit us with it via Yappa on IGN.com. All right. Unlock block trivia time. Joe writes in and says, I finally played Alan Wake this week. I know Miranda did recently too. After years of being badgered by us, the podcast unlocked to play it. You were all right, and Alana was wrong. <laughs> Love you, Alana, but thank you, Joe. Uh, he says, it's great. I did notice a lot of product placement, which was weird to see in 2020, as it's not been normalized like we once thought outside of sports games. So my question is this. Uh, we all know Energizer is used throughout the game. It powers your flashlight, the batteries. Yeah. <laughs> there are many other product placements as well. Which one of these does not have a product placement or advertisement in Atlan Wake. Now, I'm going to go to Miranda last because I expect she's going to get this right, having just played the game. But uh, Destin, I'll go to you first. So Xbox, 3, Xbox 360, Verizon Wireless, Folgers Coffee, or the Ford Sync, uh, which is the a Sync technology. So one of three of those are in the game, are in Atlan Wake. One of them isn't. Do you happen to know which one is the fake? Uh, I was going to say the Ford Sync. Okay. D. Brandon, any thoughts I, here? I have no idea. I genuinely don't because I don't remember that game. Yeah. <laughs> like I played it so long ago. Um, uh, it's tough. Like, I've seen Xbox 360 ads in games before, like back in that era. So I believe yeah. that was one. Uh, I imagine Verizon Wireless is in there. It's between Folgers and Ford for me. I don't know if Ford Sync is an actual car, but... It's got to be, right? It's got to be. I'm going to go D, Ford Sync. Go, okay. So, De and then Destin, you said Ford as well, right? Can I change my answer? No. <laughs> no. We're in this no, together. All right. So you're both Ford. Miranda, do you, do you remember this fresh off the game? I don't. So that's one of the hard parts that I was streaming this game. So it's not like I'm paying attention to every single thing. Though I was hunting those, those thermoses. Like those thermoses, like laser focused on them. Um, but... <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the other ones that I know were in there. There are some things I definitely saw. Obviously, Energizer is the most prominent of them. I actually don't know what Ford Sync is. That does not sound like a car to it's me. It's not a car. Okay, so yeah. it, it's like tech, It's but it's, it's uh, multimedia. It's like entertainment software that goes in the cars. Okay. So it is, but it is a thing that they have pushed. It's, this is, I will just tell you, Ford Sync is a real thing. It's not okay. a, so he's not, so, Joe's not trolling you with that. Yeah. So I feel bad that I don't actually remember what this is, although I did really enjoy Alan Wake. Um, I'm dying. I'm dying to know what it is. I know, right? Like, so this is a good me, one. Ford Sync is so specific. It really I, is, like, which makes me like suspicious. There's no I, way that's the right answer. I don't know if I remember seeing Verizon in it. Well, look, we know he wears a lot of flannel, and anyone that wears flannel drinks Folgers coffee. We know oh, this. We oh, all I, grew up on these commercials. Some of these. I'm going to go B, just to be different. B? Yeah, just to be different. What, 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 Miranda, what are you doing? I'm doing B, Verizon Wireless. Verizon, okay. I don't well, remember. I think I could be wrong. Joe has clowned you all. It was, oh, it was Folgers. Folgers. There's no God. Folgers. 
in Alan Wake. Although, yeah, see, and what I love about this, I have to I have to tip my cap to Joe because Folgers is was the perfect red herring to throw in this because it makes it would make sense if it was in there. Like it wasn't an obvious. Yeah. So, That's one hundred percent my thought process. I was like, flannel cabin, obviously Folgers is. No, in there. Wait, I thought I saw because there's a lot of coffee makers you pass. So as I was just saying, the main collectible you find are thermoses. Like there's, they're just freaking everywhere. It's great. I love them. And <laughs> I was like, Dude, guys, I never saw collectibles. Anyway, um, but I remember passing like coffee stations of different buildings, and I thought. I thought I saw Folgers, but maybe it was just a generic like red can sort of thing rather than <laughs> yeah. Folgers brand. So yeah, that's that good though. That well, good. Joe, well done. You've stumped everybody. So if anybody else out there, keep those awesome trivia questions coming. You can send them via email. And that email address is unlocked at IGN.com. And uh, that will pretty well bring us back to the end of another show. The big one, the system is out. If you've got it, enjoy it. If you haven't been able to get your hands on it, I hope you're able to get your hands on one soon. Uh, as for me, you can find me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. A reminder, I reviewed both the Xbox Series X and the Series S as consoles, as hardware units. So if you haven't checked those out, uh, and you maybe you know it's something to watch while you're setting up your consoles, <laughs> just because it will take a little while to set the thing up. So check those out. Uh, also, IGN Unfiltered is back this month. I uh, put out that episode a week or two ago. It is with Raven Software co-founder Brian Raffle. They are the studio behind uh, the campaign for this year's Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Check that out. And I think that's it for me. Yeah, that's fine. Brandon Tyrell. Hey, hi, I'm Brandon. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brandon Tyrell. <clears throat> uh, this week I reviewed Assassin's Creed, almost said Odyssey, but it's Valhalla. <laughs> uh, you can find that review on IGN right now. Um, it's very long, but uh, if you have questions, I probably answered them because I wrote over 4,000 words, which I shouldn't That's have a done. Lot. But I did, uh, or watch the video review. There, are, There's more information in the written review, obviously. Um, but yeah. That's up, and I hope you've all been enjoying the next-gen coverage on IGN. It's been a huge, huge effort from everyone involved, and um, we've got a lot more coming up this week and next week, so stay tuned. We're, uh, we're really making a go of it. Destin, you've been putting together some awesome next-gen video oh, yeah. sort of comparison features. Yeah, Destin. thank you, Ryan. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Thank you, too. Uh, I did one for Gears 5. That was my first one around when the embargo was up for the Series X. And I just today released one for Spider-Man Miles Morales on the PlayStation 5. Um, these are super deep dives where like, I slow down the game if it's running at 60 versus 30 or like Gears runs at 120 in multiplayer to sort of show what you're actually getting at that higher frame rate. I do deep dive on ray tracing for Spider-Man Miles Morales. I'm super proud of these pieces. You can check those out on IGN.com right now. And then uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Destin Legary. And tonight is Destiny 2 Beyond Light Night. Uh, I'm going to be streaming that on my personal channel just because you know I love Destiny. So um, yeah, I'm going to be playing a a whole bunch of Destiny, and uh, that's that's my reward for all the hard work I put into those those comparisons. So, yeah, I, I heard Destiny also runs at 120. We just found out that it runs at 120 <laughs> in Crucible. That's incredible for a, for a console to be uh, touting. That's that's really really cool stuff. Yeah. All right, Miranda, take us home, please. You also have been putting a lot of hard work into helping people get the most out of their next gen console launches. Yes, if I seem a little frazzled, it's because I've been working super hard on getting together an Xbox Series X guide for all of you. So this is the things you want to do first, not necessarily playing games, but a lot of the back end stuff in the systems that you want to set up, um, how to set parental controls. Uh, we also have some guides on audio options and a bunch of other things. So please check out our guide if you do need help. And if you're not saying something that you need, maybe hit me up on Twitter, which you can find me at Half a Gross and that's Havoc with a K. Uh, so please definitely check that out. We'll have tons of guides going up. We have one for Yakuza. We have one for Gears Tactics, if you're just jumping into that. Uh, IGN guides will be around always for you. We're, we're trying our best to make sure we got everything covered. So please, please, please use our guides. We work incredibly hard on those. Um, also for me tonight, I'll be streaming a Remedy game. Also, I'm playing Control. So another another fun game of collectibles. 
Good stuff. All right. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your next gen console launch week, and we will see you back here for episode 470 next week.